over 400 human casualties, a feline willing to do whatever it takes to achieve success during the hunt. Trail of devastation left by a tigress that appeared to be more intelligent than usual. Fear and dread among the villagers, causing them to lock up their houses for days. Seven years of pursuit and a conclusion of profound regret. Today, you're about to be introduced to the true tale of the Champalite Tigress, who roughly claimed 436 human victims and had her story documented in a book. So go ahead and click right on the like button, consider subscribing to our channel. 1900, Himalayas, Western Nepal, and a rural village at the foothills of the Himalayas. A danger emerged from the mountains, as an animal began to roam around the village. Its nocturnal movements were heard by the residents, and night after night, the livestock started to be devoured. The village inhabitants initially suspected a snow leopard, but as the attacks persisted, they realized it was too much meat for a single leopard to consume. That's when they began to suspect a tiger, and their suspicion was confirmed when, right in the middle of the day, a tigress was observed taking down one of the goats. With the suspicion confirmed, it was time to take action. The weapons the population possessed were primarily machetes and spears, and with these, some village men confronted the animal that was preying on their goats. It was during this confrontation that the first human casualty occurred, in broad daylight, very close to the village. Upon experiencing the taste of human flesh and realizing that hunting a human was much easier than any other animal, the tigress shifted her focus and began to routinely attack the villagers. In a matter of months, dozens of fatal victims were claimed, reaching a juncture where every family in the village had lost at least one member due to the tigress. Fear spread alarmingly among them, and on numerous occasions, the people reached out to the authorities of nearby towns. 24 months after the initial assaults, the Nepalese government dispatched a small army commission to the village to hunt down the tigress. The movement of the men through the mountains caused the tigress to cross the Sarda River, which borders India, transitioning into a different territory. However, the terror moved along with her. The change in habitat led the tigress back to her old habits of hunting animals until she encountered her first village teeming with humans. That region wasn't home to just one village, but many, sustaining themselves through goat rearing and small-scale farming. The tigress was guided by the goats released to graze towards the villages, rekindling all memories of human flesh within her. Initially, she observed for days. Moving from village to village, the tigress studied the villagers' way of life. Then, without concealment, she commenced hunting humans. Progressing from village to village, she claimed her victims during the day, fearless of any form of reprisal. Goats no longer satisfied her. It was humans she desired to sink her teeth into. Among her victims, women and children constituted the majority, as they were tasked with gathering firewood and collecting fruits. They were easy prey to fill the stomach of a formidable predator, a fact the tigress quickly grasped. The attacks escalated with each passing month, as the tigress grew more confident. It seemed as though she had mapped out the entire region, varying the frequency and location of her assaults, eluding local hunters and often devouring them, given their lack of firearms and only possessing makeshift weaponry. The tigress became known as the Shambawat Tigress, a name that encompassed the entire area she targeted. Yet, among the local residents, she had another name. Some referred to her as the Queen, mesmerized by the beast's dominance. Others dubbed her a demon, grappling with the constant fear of becoming her next victim. British hunters who heard of the events traveled to the location in an attempt to boast if they managed to bring down the tigress, but all of them were unsuccessful. Acquainted with the region, the tigress would attack and then travel about 32 kilometers, scattering her trail and confounding pursuers. The hunters showcased that she was not merely a strong creature but also highly intelligent. Now it was official, the Chapawart region had a renowned man-eater that nobody could hunt, and many didn't even attempt to pursue her anymore. These attacks persisted for years until 1907 when the tigress's hunger seemed to intensify, 
leading to an escalation in attacks as well. The interval of four to seven days between attacks vanished, as if the feline had gone into a frenzy. Many victims were killed and left uneaten, indicating a shift in the tigress's behavior. The attacks began to focus on the Kameon district, a small Indian village. For a week, the attacks occurred daily, prompting the villagers to lock themselves in their homes for five days, refraining from venturing out for anything until the tigress moved on. During these days, her furious growls could be heard around the houses, and she often attempted to enter the residences by scratching at the doors. After five days, she gave up and sought a meal in another village, inevitably claiming more victims. Over time, the people working in the fields began to pay attention and noticed that the tigress seemed to believe she was truly reigning over the entire area. After an attack, she would roar loudly, as if celebrating her success. Every time they heard a roar in the midst of the forest, it meant the tigress had dragged her prey there and was feasting. That's when the hunter Jim Corbett arrived in the region. An experienced hunter, he had heard rumors of the legend that had stretched for nearly seven years. Jim was renowned for hunting leopards and being able to swiftly track animals, and the tigress proved to be no exception. On the very day Jim Corbett arrived, a 16-year-old youth disappeared while gathering firewood, leaving a trail of blood. Jim followed the trail and came upon the young boy's body, which had been brutally attacked. Sensing he was being watched, Jim turned around just as the tigress pounced on him. Startled, Jim fired twice but missed, and the tigress fled once again. Jim understood the magnitude of the danger after nearly losing his life and devised a strategy with 300 men from the village to encircle the perimeter, luring the tigress to the location where they would be waiting. Around noon, the queen, as she was known, came into Jim's sights and was taken down. Following this experience, Jim Corbett's life underwent two major turns. The first was his transformation from a hunter to an investigator and writer. He delved into the stories of all the victims claimed by the demonic queen. He concluded that at least 436 lives had been lost due to the tigress's attacks, with 200 of them in the Nepalese village alone. His life became dedicated to the pursuit of these hunts and documenting each one, with the accounts eventually becoming books. However, a second twist awaited Jim's life. Time passed, and old age caught up with the distinguished hunter, bringing with it a flood of reflections. In his final book, he discovered that historically, starting from the year 1857, British colonists had encouraged the disarmament of the entire population of India, including the small villages residing in areas near the forest. Human expansion surged ahead, encroaching upon the habitats of leopards and tigers. As a result, these animals ventured into villages, feeding on human beings who were undoubtedly much easier prey to conquer. Reflecting on this, he deeply regrets having taken down all these animals and attributes a significant portion of the blame for the man-eater attacks to the government of that time. Today, these animals are facing extinction, and numerous studies suggest that their plight might be connected to the high levels of legal hunting during the 1900s. Thanks for watching, take care.